thoughts on uh, First Samuel. Um, as as normal, I won't go through the whole, whole list, but you know, just be mindful uh, if you're if you're not uh, talking or you know responding uh, to put yourself on mute so that uh, we don't potentially disrupt um, how it comes across to everybody else. Uh, and I've noticed that it's, it's creating a, maybe feedback or something like that, but everyone else notices it. So just make sure you go on mute if you're not talking. And you know, make sure everybody participates, and let's try not to dominate. If you uh, are one that likes to, uh, you know, uh, participate a lot, I'll make sure we leave some room for others to participate as well. So, with that said, Alan. Uh, okay. Good to have you all here tonight. We are. Last week, we, we completed the story of uh, David and Goliath. Uh, so that puts us into chapter 18, beginning tonight. Uh, we're about halfway through the book of 1 Samuel right now, I think it'd be good to maybe stop every now and then and just remind ourselves of the, of the bigger picture here. Uh, the, uh, you know, the bird's eye view, if you will, of what's going on. Uh, uh, the purpose of the book of Samuel, uh, uh, is uh, 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 is to relate Israel's history, uh, and it's a part of a continuous story uh, that began uh, with the uh, uh, with the Exodus uh, from Egypt, uh, and uh, uh, and and we follow the story all the way through the Pentateuch and. Uh, and Joshua and Judges in the first Samuel. And it's a story that that talks about, uh, well, it's a totally in relation, uh, it's totally in terms of God's relationship uh, with the nation and its people, its leaders. Let's go to the bathrooms and you need me to put my headphones in. Uh -huh. I got my earpiece in. I mean, is it going to be loud? I don't know. You're not saying nothing. Liz and Nicole, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, book, the, the book of Samuel, uh, of course, is about the beginning of the, of, of the monarchy uh, and, uh, and about what high hopes um, uh, Israel had for their new monarchy, and, uh, uh, and and it talks about what could have been with that monarchy, but, but it didn't happen. Uh, it talks about David, uh, 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 and uh, but the uh, uh, but the the historical facts that we are reading in 1 Samuel are more than just a story. It's a, uh, it's, a, uh, it's, 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 it's a theology. Uh, and, uh, and so we need to keep that in mind as we, as we, as we go through the book of Samuel uh, and, and any book in the Old Testament for that matter. Uh, the, uh, um, uh, in the story of uh, David, which we're we'll into now, uh, you'll see lessons taught about the about the qualities and the character uh, uh, um, that God uh, looks for in a man who would lead His people, and it's also about the way that God deals with uh, His kings uh, and His people. It's a uh, 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 it's uh, in the narratives we can see that God is is um, 
is always there. Uh, uh, in one way or another, um, uh, meeting his people, the good times and the bad times. And when, when Israel suffered from time to time, uh, it was owing to uh, the failure of their leaders and of the people. But, uh, but God was always there, uh, ready to help them in every way in which they, they would be willing to accept his help. Uh, and so in this way, the, uh, the book of Samuel points backwards and it points forward. It tells us what has been and it tells us what is to come. But uh, on another level, uh, as we look at the book of Samuel, we uh, see a story of people from an ancient culture uh, that is far different than ours. But we also see people who are not really much different from us. We have the same desires, the same wants, the same needs. They, uh, uh, they, uh, they had the same uh, frailties. Uh, they made the same mistakes. They had their good days and their bad days. Uh, they struggled with God just like we do. Uh, they were not always sure how to relate to this God that they couldn't see. Sometimes we find ourselves in the same predicament. So, so their story is our story. And as we read this, these stories, um, as if we look carefully, uh, we can see ourselves in them. You know, these stories are, uh, are gifts to us from God. Uh, and they were written thousands of years ago, but they are really about you and me. Uh, and just as a little aside here, uh, I hope you, you've been following the uh, the Theodrama uh, series in our Sunday uh, morning bulletins. Uh, uh, Dr. John Mark Hicks, uh, a professor of theology at, at David Lipscomb University, uh, is presenting a high-level overview of the Bible. And as he walks us through the Bible, he explains how we each fit into the story. So with that said, let's get into 1 Samuel chapter 18. We're going to start off reading the first four verses. Would anyone like to volunteer to read those verses? I'll read it. Okay, Did somebody else Did somebody... want to No, go ahead, Carol. Okay. Okay. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David. And he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow and his belt. Thank you. So, uh, uh, so why do you think David and Jonathan felt so well? Uh, do, you, uh, do you see them as being anything alike? If could you, you ask that again, back, Alan? Go ahead. No, could you ask that, ask that question again? Could you ask that question again? Oh, yes. Uh, see, Jonathan and David seem to have hit off pretty well together. 
uh, you know, they immediately took a liking to each other. Um, why do you suppose that was? Uh, 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 do you, anything in their background that might make them similar? They're both very active in the military. Oh, oh, okay, how was that, Tom? So they were both very active as soldiers in the military. Yeah. Their heart was at uh, being uh, fighting for their nation. Yeah, they are both men of action. We saw early on where, uh, where, uh, where when Saul was um, at a against the Philistines and uh, 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 and Jonathan took the initiative to to go and scale a a cliff and uh, 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 and attack the Philistines just him and his armor bearer uh, so that sort of got things moving didn't it so um, uh, so they were both men of action uh, and of course with with David stepping in and uh, fighting Goliath when no one else would. Uh, see, Jonathan said, there's a man after my own heart there. So, so he took a liking to David right away. Uh, now let's look at verses five through nine. Would someone like to read those verses? I can read it, Alan. <clears throat> okay. So he said five through nine. Uh, whatever mission Saul sent him on, David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. This pleased all the troops and Saul's officers as well. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, uh, Philistine, the woman came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing. Uh, with joyful songs and with timbrels and lyres or lyres. Uh, as they danced, they sang. Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. This refrain pleased him greatly. Uh, uh, this, I'm sorry, this pleased him greatly. Uh, they have credited David with tens of thousands of thought, but me with only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. Okay. Uh, David was a fairly successful man here, wasn't he? But Saul was a successful man too. I mean, Saul was no slouch. Uh, he was a uh, he was a great warrior. Uh, but then he heard these, uh, you know, you know hear the women dancing and singing as they were re returning from battle. And uh, they were singing, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Now, this is what you call Hebrew poetry. It's, uh, it's called parallelism, where uh, where you, uh, you you say about the same thing in in two different ways. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, the women were trying to put Saul down. I think they were just trying to to uh, uh, to praise David, but I'm not sure they necessarily meant it to be an insult against Saul. But Saul took it that way though, didn't he? Uh, whether he's justified in doing that or not, or, or whether he's just being paranoid, uh, he took it as a slight. Now, uh, what about us? Do we have a, do, uh, do we do the same thing sometimes? Uh, 
let's make up a situation here. Uh, uh, I walk into church one morning. Well, that is when we ever get back to church again. Uh, and uh, and there's some people standing at the door, and, and they say, "Hello, Alan. Uh, uh, nice haircut." And I say, "Oh, well, thank you. I, I, I'm getting feel I'm, I'm feeling pretty good there then." And then, and then a few minutes later, uh, Tom walks in, and they say, "Hello, Tom. Great haircut." And I think, "Wait a minute. What's the matter with my haircut?" <laughs> Uh, isn't that the way we are sometimes? Definitely, yes. Yeah. Why is that? Why are we that way? Because we're human, Alan. <laughs> yeah. Because we're right? human. We're human, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is it about, about our human makeup that makes it that way? Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I can tell you a story about myself here, a true story. Uh, at work, I guess many years ago when I was, uh, when I was working, uh, 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 our boss announced that he was going to start giving a, an Employee of the Year award. Uh, uh, and uh, and so I I thought well I'll bet I'll probably get one of those I work hard and uh, and so uh, uh, you know you know year by year passed and uh, every year someone else got the award not me uh, but. I certainly had received a lot of other awards. I had a had a whole wall full of plaques that, that I'd received, but but that didn't seem to make me all that happy. I really wanted that Employee of the Year award, and I never got it. Um, was that some saw coming out of me there? Uh, Alan? Yes. Um, now, you said that this um, s statement that these women were taking, that they weren't, do you didn't feel they were doing it deliberately to insult him, and he took it that way. So, what I'm wondering is because of things leading up to this, do you think the seeds of jealousy were planted in him when he heard this? And maybe his pride was involved in this also. Yeah, uh, uh, there are some seeds of jealousy there somewhere. You think? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure there were. I'm sure there were. Yeah. Uh, 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 and uh, 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 and uh, in fact. Uh, 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 in fact, the very next verse, uh, uh, see verse 10 uh, says, uh, 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 you know, the next day, an evil spirit from God came forcefully upon Saul. And so, uh, so, uh, so yeah, that was just the uh, beginning of, of, uh, of uh, I guess, uh, I, I guess you might say the poisoning of the relationship between David and Saul. Alan. Um, Yes. Sometimes it can be uh, even more painful when um, the person you trained, you can train somebody on the job and they get the award and you as the trainer, you don't get any recognition, but they get it. That's even more painful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, Laura says, I think sometimes we, uh, we all tend to uh, to measure ourselves against other people, and that's a common human tendency. And uh, uh, and yeah, Karen, that's a good uh, that's a good point there. Yeah. Yes. Very good. 
And we also, we also know that Saul was very insecure as it was. He was never really, he didn't want to come to the throne. And I don't think he, he ever really felt like he was up for the task. So he was already insecure and that just augmented his insecurity, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, like, can you hear me? Yes, very good. I, I, th I think it has more to do with the evil spirit than jealousy. I, I think that the evil spirit from God came forth, forcefully on Saul, and that's what made him act crazy. You know, we all get jealous, but, you know, we're able to sometimes just sort of work our way through it, and we don't do crazy things. But it seems to me Saul was just overwhelmed by this. And he did things that he probably otherwise wouldn't do. And, uh, you know, how God or why God imparted an evil spirit, I don't know. But I think that that was the decisive consideration. That's just my, my, my take on the matter. Yeah. That's pretty confusing to me. Why, why is God sending an evil spirit? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Why would God send an evil spirit? Yes. Why is he sending an evil spirit? Uh, uh, is evil spirit the uh, the absence of the of of the Holy Spirit? Uh, uh, was it something that was sent in place of the Holy Spirit? Uh, uh, what was that evil spirit? Um, uh, was Saul, uh, did Saul have a, uh, 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 a tendency to, uh, to, uh, you know, to go that way anyway? Uh, uh, was it because Saul uh, saw that the spirit of God had left him and, they, and was resting on David? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and Celia so asked the question here, uh, can we say that jealousy is sinful? Good question, Celia. Was, hey, so was there hey one? Alan. Yes. I can't help but feel that verses like that is, uh, is, is when we catch the narrow, the, the, narrow, the, um, the person who's speaking, the person who's speaking narration and not really from God. Like in, in other words, they're saying that it's from God, but it's really just, just the, the writer describing it that way. You know, like I, in, in my mind, I can't really imagine God doing good and evil. You know, that's, that's really strange to me. I, I sort of, I agree with, I agree with Joel. And I don't think it, it may have been an evil spirit. It just may have been a spirit from God, you know, but the writer may have said evil spirit because how could God impart an evil spirit? I, I, that doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Um, I think. Um, I'm, 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 Alan, I think yes. it, it was God's plan to get Saul out of there. And Saul had been told, you know, from Samuel that God was taking him out. Saul didn't do the honorable thing and stepped down. Back in 614, the evil spirit uh, created a situation where he wanted uh, David to hang out with him and play the music. So that got David... Uh, way to learn the ropes of that, about how to be a king. Okay. Uh, okay, so it's probably, she goes plan to move yourself out of the kingship there eventually. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, some versions of the Bible uh, call this, uh, I believe they call it a, a troublesome spirit rather than an evil spirit. And the word can be translated either way depending on the context. So, uh, uh, and I don't remember now how many versions do that. It seems like it's about maybe half the major versions out there that translate this as, 
as troublesome spirits. It's been a while since I looked that up. I, my memory is a little shaky on that right now. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, see, uh, yeah, Andre says, uh, he says injurious spirit. Okay, that's the word, yes. An injurious spirit. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Andre. Uh, uh, so, yeah, some versions say injurious. Okay, Alan? Yes. This is Carol. Um, the odd thing here is that um, you're, you're, the name, okay, instead of saying evil, you're saying troublesome. And I was wondering about this thing about evil because I thought to myself, now, why would God send an evil spirit which would cause Saul right away in the next few verses to um, try to kill David by throwing the, um, what did he throw? Spear. <laughs> A spear, okay? So I wondered about that. And when Joel, Joel asked this question, I was like half of the, my question, okay, you know, like, uh, why would he do that? But um, getting back to, you know, this other thing is these questions that are being asked about jealousy and so forth. The thing to me is that when you have jealousy within you, that usually leads to hatred. And then that hatred starts to eat at you until it's manifested in some way. So if we say that God sent him a troublesome spirit or, or an evil spirit, the way it gets manifested is in the next couple of verses where he tries to kill him by throwing the spear at him. So um, I think it was Celia that asked the question, can jealousy be sinful? And Lawrence said, yes, and I agree with that because of what it can lead to. And you see that in the next few verses. So um, Tom said before, and he did, it, it said prior to this that God had sent an evil spirit on him. So okay. it's, it's some sort of a spirit, okay, whether we're going to say evil or troublesome, but causes him to, to, to uh, manifest itself by trying to kill, to kill David right then and there by throwing the spear. Okay. And I think that's what jealousy leads to, what hatred leads to. So obviously okay. to me, they're sinful. Hello. Hello. Yes, Lars. Yes, Alan, I would like to make a point about um, jealousy. Yes, I saw your comment there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I would like to say jealousy isn't always sinful. Um, envy is. But jealousy isn't. If jealousy is always sinful, then then one would have to say that God is sinful. Because God is a jealous God. If something rightfully belongs to you, it's okay for you to be jealous over it. Like it belongs to you. You want it for yourself. That's okay. Because it's something that is yours. Envy, however, is when somebody has something that doesn't belong to you and you want it and you covet it and you have ill will towards that person because they have it. So um, I think it's important to note that there are times when jealousy can be sinful, but there's also times when jealousy is not sinful. And I, I think sometimes we intertwine jealousy and envy sometimes and you have to parse out the words so that we can make sure that we're not making God sinful because God is a jealous God. God doesn't want us worshiping other gods. God doesn't want us practicing idolatry. And just like when a person gets married, they take vows to one another. They're, they're jealous of their spouse. They don't want their spouse going out, talking to other people romantically. They don't want that. So in certain contexts, it's okay to be jealous. And in fact, it's healthy, but envy is always sinful. So I wanted to point that out. Okay, good. That's a good point there. Uh, 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 it says here that Saul was kept a jealous eye on David. Uh, so uh, Saul was probably jealous of his throne, which he felt belonged to him. Uh, he was jealous of of the praise that David was getting, which he felt belonged to him as a king. Uh, 
uh, um, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, but it, it, it's um, certainly okay to be see, jealous of your of your wife because you don't want someone else flirting with your wife. <laughs> That's certainly fine. That's certainly good. Uh, um, okay, good. And then Laura says, uh, uh, was Saul jealous or envious? Uh, I'd say envious because uh, because one was no longer rightfully his, but he thought it was. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, very good. And uh, and uh, Cecilia points us back to chapter 16, verse uh, 14. Uh, Let's see, what's it say there, Celia? Basically, it's saying that the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil yeah. spirit from the Lord tormented him. Okay, so the so the arrival of the evil spirit or the injurious spirit, depending on your translation there, uh, coincided with the departure of the spirit of God. From Saul, yes, uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, this injurious spirit uh, uh, seemed to come and go, uh, and uh, 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 and we saw earlier that uh, that the way they dealt with it was to was to play music uh, for Saul. Uh, they generally brought David in to play on the harp. Uh, there's an incident later, I believe it's in uh, Kings, um, and it involves, I think, the prophet Elisha, uh, where he was called on uh, by one of the kings of Israel, I believe it was. Um, uh, I, I believe it was King Ahab's son uh, to uh, uh, to prophesy to find out whether they should attack a certain city or not. And uh, Elisha didn't like this king because he was an evil king. And he said, he said, I'm so upset right now that I can't prophesy. So he said, bring in a, someone to play the harp for me. Uh, and he did, and after someone played the harp for a while, why, it, it, uh, why Elisha settled down, and he was able to prophesy. So, uh, uh, so, so I guess the music had uh, uh, had the effect of helping um, uh, Saul and and helped Elisha as well. Hello, Alan. Um, yes, Joe. Yes. Um, which translation are you using to study? For? Which translation are you using to study? Oh, which version? Yes, which version of the Bible? Okay, um, so I'm using the uh, uh, the NIV, uh, but I also refer to the uh, uh, to the uh, to the NRSV some, from time to time. Yeah, you must be using the 1984 NIV because Andre has pulled up on the screen the 2011 NIV. Yes. If you look at verse number nine, it says, and from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. Um, in my Bible, I have the NRSV pulled up, and my Bible says the same thing. It says, so Saul eyed David from that day on. So it seems like that the Hebrew translators are at an impasse here with the word. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 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 I've noticed that before. Yeah, I do have the, you know, the, the earlier NIV version. Uh, uh, and I noticed that among other versions too, uh, you know, they will often uh, bring out later versions that have substantial changes in them. Uh, uh, I've noticed that recently with the ESV version. Yes, sir. Uh, A lot of times, what happens is that the linguists get new, man well, you know, they get new manuscripts and manuscripts they haven't worked before, or they yes. or they grow deeper in knowledge about the words, and so that's why they have updated versions. Where they can get yes. the words more accurate, and sometimes yes. there's actual debate. But I find it interesting that 1984 NIV is different from the 2011 NIV, which suggests that they evolved on how they interpreted verse nine, from jealousy to kept a close eye on David. So that's what they think is most accurate 
is kept yes. a close eye on David. Yes. Good. As far as the NIV good. board is concerned. Yeah, good point there. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, 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 it's hard to keep up with these version changes sometimes. Uh, see, Joel, uh, did you have a question or, or did we cover that question? Yeah, not, not really. I was just making a statement, you know, that, you know, if we accept the understanding that God gives evil spirits, can we look at Saul's action as being, as being sinful? You know, if God's making them sin, you know, like, so, so in other words, like that, that kind of understanding, like changes my whole theology about <laughs> a lot of things. You know, and, 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 and so that's that's why a lot of times I just look at the scriptures as, you know, like the writer, his his feelings, you know, show up in the scriptures as well. You know, like a lot of times people want to say, well, this is directly from God, but sometimes we have to allow, you know, the 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 the, the room for the author to be the author. Yeah, and, and I would add that even today, there's different interpretations of the Bible and the different interpretations of Hebrew words, and there's no reason to believe that the writer didn't also have different interpretations, that the people who copied Hebrew text, a lot of times they were copied over many times, and the writer probably, or could have, not always, but could have actually inserted his own words occasionally for his own interpretation in the same way that that modern translations will insert their own words for their their particular uh, opinion or interpretation of what's being said. Um, yeah, it's often a matter of uh, of um, some of these uh, Old Testament writers uh, 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 using different sources for specific verses there, and so there's often a a, uh, 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 that's often the case between the uh, the Masoretic text and the and um, and the Septuagint version, uh, uh, which is why those two versions all often differ so much. Alan, yes. Uh, okay, Tony and I are sitting here t talking, and w w on this verse nine where it says, and from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. I don't, yes. that's what mine says, okay? So what we're looking at that more like he, he kept an eye on him because he didn't trust him. Tr trust him to, um, because right prior to that, it says, <clears throat> what more can he get but the kingdom, okay? In verse eight. So mm -hmm. is it more like, okay, I'm going to keep an eye on him, David, because he may go beyond what he's been doing to the point where, hey, he's trying to get my kingdom. I don't know what, um, I don't know what the, um, I don't want to say, what's the, what's the difference in that verse in, in your Bible, our Bible, Lawrence's Bible? I don't know. Is there a different meaning or something? Um, the, uh, um, to me, of these, to me, these Hebrew words, uh, uh, Sometimes they're not always sure what the original Hebrew word was, and sometimes the, the Hebrew words can have different interpretations. And so, uh, 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 and so, uh, you know, uh, you know, interpreters are always trying to come to do the best they can to uh, 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 you know to to, uh, to present uh, the uh, uh, the original language in the best way they can, and. That's not always an easy job, and uh, uh, and as uh, 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 as scholarship improves from you know, over the years, while well, they you know they get new tools available, and they are able to to uh, uh, to often make better interpretations. Hey, hey, Alan. Yes, I would venture to say that him uh, uh, saw I David from that day forward is probably a really accurate translation. Because in, in Saul's mind, he was seeking opportunity to kill him. <laughs> so he was he was he was eyeing him from a standpoint of, you know, watching him closely so he can come up with a way to take David out. That's what he was trying to do. Okay. 
Okay, um, 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 you saw already knew that that well, he had been told by Samuel uh, uh, that that God had uh, had determined that that uh, that uh, that his that his uh, reign would come to an end, and that he would uh, uh, and that God had raised someone else up, and so and so Saul was probably getting a getting a uh, 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 a pretty good idea right now that that that, that was David, uh, and so uh, 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 and so he, uh, you know, kings were always uh, uh, had their eye out for people who were uh, who, who had their eye on their throne. Uh, that was uh, one of the occupational risks of being a king. There was always someone around trying to knock you off, and so. So, so Saul probably, uh, Saul was paranoid, but he probably had good reason to be. Uh, so, uh, so, um, uh, and in the next, when well, chapter eighteen and nineteen, uh, uh, these will be the uh, uh, see David's time in Saul's court. Is is very quickly coming to an end. Uh, uh, by the end of chapter 19, we'll see uh, David on the run uh, for the rest of uh, Saul's life. Uh, so, uh, 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 and we'll see that you know Saul finds that everything that he tries to do to to keep an eye on David and to and to and to get David out of the way seems to go wrong. And everything that David does seems to go right. So, uh, uh, so, so life isn't going to get any easier for Saul, uh, or for David either, for that matter. Okay, we ready to move on. I guess verses ten and eleven uh, it says the next day. An evil spirit from God came forcefully upon Saul. He was prophesying in his house when David was playing the harp, as he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand, and he hurled it, saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. It sounds like Saul heard the spirit twice there, but uh, um, does anyone have a version of the Bible that says something other than Saul was prophesying? Hey, Dad. Yes. Dad, I got yes. from the King James. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, verse 10. Dad? Yes. Okay. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. Oh, he says, and he prophesied also. Oops. He was in the King James. Sorry. Yes. Does anyone have a version that says? Okay. Okay, this is the King James. Okay, verse 10 there. Um, uh, my version says Saul was prophesying. That sounds like a good thing. I, I, I have something um, different, Alan. Um, it, I'm reading from the um, ESV. Yes. And it says the the next day a harmful spirit from God rushed upon Saul, and he raved within his house while David was playing the the lyre, as uh, as he did day by day, Saul had his spear in his hand. Okay, so yeah, um, many versions translate the word rave, and uh, uh, I think rave probably is a better translation. Uh, th that's probably what he was doing. It, uh, 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 you know, he was probably making a big, uh, a big ruckus there. Uh, uh, probably, probably yelling a lot of, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Hello. So, uh, Yes. I, I just want to point out that the word spirit has several different meanings. Yes, yes. You know, 
So, I mean, uh, spirit, spirit in the Hebrew and the Greek, and even in the English has several different meanings. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so, you know, someone may say, uh, my spirits are down or, you know, or, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, you have a humble spirit or, you know, uh, or, or the, the, the store across the street from the church says that it is liquor and spirits, you know I mean? <laughs> there's, there's, uh, there's different uses of the word spirit. And so I think for us to really get to the bottom of what is going on, this evil spirit is going to require a, a bit of a word study here on how is the word yeah. spirit actually being used in this context. Yes. Yeah. Good point. Very good. Yes. So when it says Paul is prophesying it, that wasn't a good thing. <laughs> Stephanie says that Paul sounds like a madman. <laughs> okay. Verses 12 through 15. Let's look at those uh, real quick here. Uh, as, uh, Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with David, but had left Saul. So he sent David away from him and gave him command over a thousand men. And David led the troops in their campaigns. And everything he did, he had great success because the Lord was with him. When Saul saw how successful he was, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he led them in their campaigns. So, as we said a little bit earlier, everything was going right for David. Everything was going wrong for Saul. Uh, no wonder he was turning into a madman. Don't be driving anybody crazy, you think? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, uh, verse 16 then uh, is sort of a transition verse here. Uh, 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 is to say that uh, 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 but all Israel and Judah loved David because he led them in their campaigns, okay? So, but Saul is not, it sounds like Saul is not quite ready to give up on, on David yet because in the next verse, he, uh, he offers uh, to make him his son-in-law. Uh, that might sound a little strange because on the one hand, he wants to kill David, and then, and then, and then next he's offering to, to, uh, 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 to uh, give him his daughter in marriage. Uh, of course, he had already promised that, hadn't he? Uh, do you remember when Saul promised his daughter in marriage? Yes, um, that's back when he. He even asked the question back there that I had brought up last week, I think, the fact that what would I get as a re what is the person going to get as a reward who kills Goliath? And one of the things was to marry uh, the daughter of the king. Right. So right. he's oh. just following through with that. Yeah. So, uh, so apparently there had been nothing said about until now. Uh, yeah, the reward for killing Goliath. That's right. Very good, Carol. But uh, so now in verse 17, uh, uh, Saul said to David, here's my daughter, uh, here's my older daughter, Mara. I will give her to you in marriage. Only serve me bravely and fight the battles of the Lord. For Saul said to himself, I will not raise the hand against him. Let the Philistines do that. Uh, so Saul was, um, apparently, he had a method to his madness here. Uh, 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 he was offering David the chance to become a son-in-law, but, but, uh, but, uh, but, but Saul had another motive. He felt that, well, if I, I sent him on enough battles, uh, sooner or later, he'll be killed. Uh, 
um, do you remember in years to come, David using a similar strategy? Yes. Yeah. With Uriah. With Uriah, that's right. That's right. David needed to, to rid himself of Uriah. Uriah had become inconvenient for David. So he said, I got to get rid of Uriah. Uh, uh, so, uh, so David used uh, the same strategy against Uriah. Uh, although in this case, uh, David was surviving Saul's attempts to, uh, uh, to do away with him. Uh, Alan? Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, okay. Before you even get to this verse 17, um, back up in verse 13. Okay. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I wondered where it said, he, he's got all these feelings against David. He doesn't trust him. He's jealous of him. He's tried to kill him already once. And so when it says, he sent David away from him and gave him command over a thousand men. My feeling about that was right then and there. He, he's doing this, not to honor David, but with the idea of, okay, if I send him away, like you just said, into this battle, maybe he won't come back. You know, maybe he's going to get killed. And then it even goes on even more so in 17 and 18, where he's saying, I'll give you my daughter. And it's like he's... he's um, um, he uses not only her, although she, he doesn't marry her, where he says, I'm not going to raise a hand against him, let the Philistines do it. So it seems to me that every time he sends them out to battle from that point on of where um, the women said, you know, David kills his ten thousands, he, he, he's using these opportunities to try to, to get David dead. And to me, it even starts, in, like I said, in verse 13. Yeah, yeah, uh, 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 desperate to try to find some way to uh, to have uh, uh, David uh, killed, uh, and he he'd rather it be do since since David is so popular, Saul would probably rather not do it himself, but he'd rather have him killed in battle. Uh, you know, that way, uh, 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 you, you it would. Uh, you know, you know the uh, you know that would um, that way he would not be associated with David's death. Uh, and uh, as Stephanie says here, uh, she David's skills were an asset to Saul. This relationship sounded like saying, "Keep your friends close and your enemies closer." So maybe, so, oh, see, maybe Saul was one who started that phrase. I don't know, <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, yeah, that's what. Uh, 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 and perhaps by Bring his daughter. Uh, uh, he expected his daughter to help him keep an eye on David, uh, but uh, that uh, but that kind of backfired, didn't it? Uh, well, first of all, uh, well, we'll get into that next week. We're we're out of time now, and so uh, uh, so we'll take it uh, that part of the lesson next week and uh, and move on to chapter 18 and hopefully chapter 19 too. Uh, I meant to get I meant to get through both chapters 18 and 19, 19 tonight, but it didn't quite work out that way. But uh, I appreciate all your comments and all your help uh, and uh, hope to see you all back next week. Thank you. Andre, are you gonna do the prayer requests?